Hi, I'm Anya Taylor-Joy and I'm here with Harper's Bazaar UK to share some life lessons. My personal style has evolved a lot, though I would like it to evolve more because I'm constantly working, which means that I'm getting picked up at like three o'clock in the morning. So I'm wearing a lot of uh, joggers right now, which in American is sweatpants. So I'd, I'd like to extend my wardrobe a little bit more to um, not just high fashion gear for the red carpet and sweatpants. I'd like to kind of figure out the in-between a little bit more. The best piece of fashion advice I've ever been given is that you wear the clothes, the clothes don't wear you. I think what we wear matters most because of what it means to you. If it makes you feel really confident and it makes you feel incredible, then wear whatever it is that you want. I think dressing for other people is potentially not great for your self-esteem. What should matter the most is that you're pleasing yourself, you're not dressing for anybody else. The issue with inspiration from characters is that I've recently gotten into a bad habit of giving characters my style or my mannerisms. So the other day, um, I went out in a slip dress and a leather jacket and boots and someone told me that I was dressed like my character from the menu and I was like, no, I'm just dressed like me when I was 18. So I think we're kind of, we're sort of intermittently swapping. What have I learned about beauty? It's about what makes you feel most confident. Whatever makes you feel most confident, just go for that. Best piece of beauty advice, I guess, is that you look most beautiful when you're happy. So if you're doing something that you love, that's when you truly look beautiful. In terms of practically, um, my mum told me to never touch my eyebrows, and I am glad that I have not done that, really. I guess I feel the most beautiful when I forget about my own face. Uh, which is quite often if I'm so lost in something, like dancing, for instance, or I'm really belly laughing with a friend, I'm not thinking about whether I look cute or whether I look appropriate or whatever it is. I just feel happy. So that's when I feel most beautiful. Self-care to me, I mean, now it means that I actually have a, a face washing routine, which I did not have until I was like 22, which is not great. And all of these products smell really nice and lovely, so it actually feels like quite a treat. But I think the, the biggest lesson of self-care for me is just not putting so much pressure on yourself. It's something that I really struggle with, and I think reminding yourself to be kind and to kind of talk to yourself as if you were a friend, that is something that is pivotal to my self-care because I think we can all be incredibly hard on ourselves. What have I learned about success? That it doesn't always look the way that other people think it's going to look. I think it's obviously different for everybody. What success should feel like is when you feel proud of you. When that's a, a personal proud moment and you're not getting your validation from other people. In terms of choosing projects and, you know, um, brands to collaborate with, it, it's usually quite an instinctual move. It's, things often feel quite fated um, to me. It used to be a lot about, especially with movie projects, character and story. I'm now a bit more director-led because I just want to learn from the best of the best and being on a set. If you're not constantly learning, I think you're missing a massive opportunity. So anytime I'm not in front of the camera, I'm spending time with every other department, just learning as much as I can. But yeah, I think it all starts from a gut reaction. Trying to pick a project that I'm most proud of is kind of like picking between children. Even if you do have a favorite, you're not supposed to say it. <laughs> I think I'm most proud of how I've managed it all, to be honest, because I work back to back, and I think that's been really helpful for me because characters are real people for me, and I mourn them when they're gone. So being able to jump from the skin of one person into the next person and rather quickly, that's helped me compartmentalize my feelings and sort of say, okay, you have an hour to grieve and then you have to let it go because you have to do the next thing the next day. That's been something that I'm proud of. I'm proud that I've kind of kept up with that thus far. I think I knew I always wanted to be in acting specifically, but I always wanted to be an artist. I really don't remember ever thinking about anything else other than there was like a moment when I thought I could both go to university to study marine biology and be an actor at the same time because, you know, I've got so much time for that. <laughs>
I just love animals. I love them so much. And I, I think I invented a title. It wasn't even marine biology. It was large animal biologist because I wanted to work with specifically orcas and big cats. And I couldn't find something like an umbrella term for that. But hopefully in the future, I can be an advocate for them. The one piece of advice that I would give anybody wanting to get into this industry is if you're doing it for the glamour or the fame or the blah, 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 it's not for you. It is not what this is. This is hard work. And if you're not in love with your craft, if you're not in love with your art, you will be empty because that is the thing that sustains you. So make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. If you would be performing to one person in a room, same as a thousand people, then this is the career for you. If you wouldn't be comfortable performing for that one person, probably not. I think we put a lot of importance on romantic relationships and I have to say I think some of the most romantic relationships I've ever had are with my best friends. It's a commitment and a bond that goes beyond anything else because they're your chosen family. I'm sometimes very humbled by that kind of love and I feel very lucky to experience it. I think my friends would describe me as quirky, loyal, uh, I'm a very very loyal friend. I had it passionate, I guess. I was gonna, I was switching between sensitive or passionate, but I think passionate. I'm passionate about everything, it's insufferable. Like if I, I'm just such, I don't even know the distinction between the terms, but like nerd, geek, etc. me. I love to love things. And if I'm in, I am fully in, and I have no embarrassment about my love of something. <laughs> Ooh, what empowers me? being creative. If I could spend all day, every day making art, that is what I would be doing. Which I'm kind of lucky and I get to do it. Um, I do work a lot, so thank you. Please keep hiring me. Yeah, I think there's nothing more empowering than when you work with a group of people and that collaboration provides something that is so much bigger than you could ever do by yourself. And everyone's on the same page and you're just using everybody's gifts and that collaboration is really, really special um, to me. So yeah, I think that's very empowering. Is there anything I've learned about confidence? Listen, I'm still figuring it out, same as everyone, or I hope same as everyone, unless I'm very far behind. I think it's something that has to come from you. I don't think it's something that you can rely on other people to constantly validate you because at the end of the day, that's not true. You have to believe that you are worthy. And that's actually really hard, or at least it's hard for me and the friends that I've spoken to about it. So I think the daily practice of believing in yourself and thinking that you're worthy is um, pretty important. So a way I've learned to deal with unfair criticism. I used to cry and now I laugh because you have to. At the end of the day, it's, listen, there's a lot of people on the internet. Why would you let a stranger's opinion of you ruin your whole day? I've done it, it's awful. You have to live in the now and you have to live in the present. And something that I've often thought to myself is, I really rate my friends. I think my friends are incredible people and they choose to spend time with me. So I'm like, okay, I can't be that bad if these wonderful people are choosing to spend time with me and they love me. So that's a little hack if you're having a, a bad moment or a bad day. There's slightly a difference to me between knowing your worth and standing up for what you believe in. I find it very easy to stand up for other people. That's never been something that I've struggled with. I struggled more with standing up for myself. It's very weird. I'll stand up for my character, but it took me a long time to stand up for myself. I'm finally at a place where I feel proud that I kind of sink my feet into the ground enough that if someone tries to push me, I just don't move. And that is a really good feeling because I think, especially as women, we're taught to apologize for our existence a lot. Be as dainty and as quiet and as unfailingly polite as possible. And you can still be polite whilst owning your worth and thinking, you know, I'm worth just as much as anybody else right now. And it is all of our duties to listen to each other, not just people of a certain gender. Something that I've learned about feminism, A, let's get this straight, it's about equality. It's not about men suck. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about being treated as equals. It's like pretty normal and standard and, or should be normal and standard. However, it's going to take 
a very long time to overthrow thousands of years of a patriarchal society. And I've noticed that yes, sometimes it's easy to kind of laugh at the joke at your gender's expense or, you know, let something slide, but actually where the change will come is in slow, persistent pressure. Because if we get tired, things will slide back. So you kind of just have to hold that line and eventually we will get to a point where everyone is treated equally. It's exhausting, but you gotta hold the line. You just have to. It's the best piece of life advice that I've received from another woman. It's so simple and it's so silly, but it's, this is your life, enjoy it. Only speaking for myself, I can take things very, very seriously at times and I'm a highly emotional human being and I, you know, everything is very high stakes for me. And at a certain point, it's like, some people believe that our time on earth is like supposed to be a vacation. Enjoy it. This is your one life. Thanks for watching. I hope it was semi-helpful in some way. 